One of our subscribers had two questions. They're not really related to each other, but I'm going to address both of them in this quick tip. All right, his first question is, when I start out, uh, no, when do I start out with a wet brush or a dry brush? Um, and then he says, is the same rule the same all for egg temper, casein, or open or regular acrylics? Well, dry brush is really not a word or a term that belongs to oil painting or even, well, maybe, maybe more so to egg tempera casein. Dry brush was originally a term that evolved in watercolor painting because watercolor painting depends so much on how wet or how dry the surface is. But somehow, as things will happen, the language seeped into some oil painter's language. And so now you hear on YouTube and maybe in workshops and other places, you hear that term dry brush used as it relates to oil or perhaps as it relates to these other medium, mediums. So, so here's what we're talking about. What do we mean by dry brush? Well, we don't mean that the, bri the brush is just dry and nothing else is happening. Dry brush really means that the brush is dry. It, you, you don't have any medium or any uh, thinners in the brush. And that just a little bit of paint is on the tip of the brush. And I'm, I'm just going to show you a little bit right here uh, about the difference between dry brush and wet brush, it may seem obvious to you. But let's see, I'm just going to reach in here for a little bit of a and crimson. Just put just a little bit on the tip of the brush. Now this surface is dry. So this surface is dry and there's just a little bit of paint on the brush and the brush is dry and you see what happens when I do that. The brush really does just drag along the surface and you get a really rough um, appearance of the surface, a more textured appearance. Now, the wet brush, the wetter brush, of course, is going to give you um, a wetter appearance. And so let's just do that same color, same color with wet brush. And so here we go. And I'm just pulling. And all I did there, I, I didn't add medium. I didn't add thinners. All I'm doing there is adding just a little bit more paint to the brush. And I'll pull that... Um, pull that paint onto the canvas and I'm pushing a little harder you see I get a wetter effect. Now let's take that a step further and let's add just a little bit of thinner. Now we have to be careful when we add thinner to oil uh, especially during the the pro progression of a painting. Early on in the painting when you're painting with oil uh, adding thinners is fine but not later on in the painting because um, the painting gets done in layers, and if the thinner paints, the ones that have thinner in them, appear on the surface of the thicker paints, that's, that's going to cause a cracking um, as the paint dries. There's a little irregularity there. So I won't go into the terminology here. That's not necessary. What I do want to show you is that if I add just a tiny bit of thinner to the brush and have it just slightly wet, then I get a little bit wetter effect. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I, maybe I was a little bit shy, but here we go. With the amount of thinner here. There we go. Now you see, now you see the wetter effect on the just on the raw canvas itself. Well, you combine that with uh, colors and uh, and with interpretations, and you can see how that can begin to act in your favor. Now his question was. When do I start out? That you hear in the background is Charlie, my little kitty. Um, he is um, unhappy because he can't find his toy, but we'll just ignore that. Okay, back to the question. When do I start out with a wet brush or a dry brush? In oil painting, it's always better to start wet and then gradually have the paint drier as you finish. Now, Usually, of course, you know there are several techniques for starting out in oil painting. So I, I'm going to use this, this uh, image of a rose here. I'm not going to do an oil painting of a rose for you here. That's not my purpose. But I want to use just that image of the rose just to show you, uh, the uh, show you about starting a painting 
um, when you start general to specific, which is the more traditional way to start an oil painting, uh, where you're not starting out doing details, but you start out with a big picture. You start out with a large shape, the dark or dark or in shadow area blocked in, and the light and are the lighter and not in shadow areas blocked in. Those end up being wet, and they should be wet because that is the that is the surface that that is closer to the canvas. And then as we work outward from the canvas, building paint, we have less wet. So I don't know of any circumstance in oil paint where it's a good idea to start with dry brush. And now some people may start out doing the preliminary draw, drawing with dry brush and that's fine. But as far as laying in the painting, I, don't, I can't think of any, any circumstance in which that might work well. And so, for example, if, you were, if, if we were using that rose, and I'll just sort of come, well, I'm about to run out of space over here. But say, um, now here, this is preliminary drawing. But you see, I don't have the. I've got it damp, but I don't have it. Uh, I don't have it really wet. Neither do I have it dry. I have just enough paint on the brush to enable me to make a line. And so, just for the preliminary drawing here, um, I'll just go right over that part right there. Just for the preliminary drawing, this works very well to have the brush a little bit wetter. Now, if some, as I said, some people might have their brush a little bit drier for the preliminary drawing, but for me, it works better to have the brush a little bit wetter. And so then uh, I would um, maybe indicate where the, um, the shadow, in shadow, and the not in shadow areas would be, where the, uh, there we go, just a little indication of where that, uh, that petal would be of the rose and so on, and, and, and on and on and on I would go. Now, there the brush needs to be wet. When blocking in that in shadow, or uh, uh, yeah, the area of the flower of the rose that is in shadow, when blocking that in, it's still a little bit on the wet side. So I would be blocking in the shadow area over here. And um, so it's something sort of like that. And uh, what I'm doing there, I'm not going to explain color here. I'm just showing this is just about wet and dry. This is not about color, not about color theory. You find that in other quick tips and in our online lessons. But this is just about the, the degree of wetness of dryness in a brush. The, wet, the brush is a little bit wetter here, but not a whole lot wetter. But you see, when we're putting on that first layer of paint, we want that to be... Um, don't want that to be too dry. We want it to be relatively wet because we're going to add other layers to it. And so we would, if, if we were doing a study or a painting of that rose, uh, then we want to add other layers to it. And so uh, there would be the more or less the in shadow portion of that rose and done relatively wet. Now I'm, I'm rubbing some of the color in there as well as stroking it in. Um, so now there's, there is the in shadow portion. Uh, the not in shadow portion, I would do the same thing as far as getting it blocked in. I'd go into the... Uh, it's, it's a little bit wetter. I go into that uh, the rosier color or the uh, the lighter color, and let's see. I really am going to rinse that shadow color off, rinse it off, and then I'm going to to uh, dry it. Now, now I'll go into the the nut and shadow area, and I'll block that in, keeping. And I've got the wetness in the brush, a slight wetness in the brush, but not very wet. Now you're going to ask me. <laughs> I can hear it now. You can ask me uh, in the quick tip, how wet is that brush? Not very. And you're going to ask me, what does it have in it? Gamsol. <laughs> um, at, at this point, we don't need to be using liquid uh, because liquid, the purpose of liquid is just to, dr to dry the paint faster. Uh, at this point, we don't need to be using um, anything else. Uh, we could use a little bit of linseed oil, but actually at, in this first layer, just a tiny bit of solvent in the brush, Gamsol, or tur in the old days we used turpentine, in the old days, I, I, they weren't that old actually, in the early days. Before we had these odorless paint thinners, we would use turpentine for this. Anyway, so I would very quickly here block in the knot and shadow area, and you see by doing that, and doing that relatively wet, not dry, relatively wet, then I get the in shadow and the knot and shallow area of the rose blocked in, 
so that I can then proceed to develop those in shadow and not in shadow areas as I build up the details or and the definition or the expression of the rose. So I hope that answers that. Now as far as the dry brush is concerned, uh, <clears throat> if you're going to use dry paint in a brush, it happens towards the end and it ha happens towards uh, defining details. It doesn't happen in the early stages. Now that I think as far as my as far as the traditional techniques go and those are the ones that I have studied and that uh, I believe in more strongly uh, that goes that would that procedure or that process would go with any of the wet mediums or that the opaque wet mediums such as casein or the acrylics now as to this other question let's just address that aside from the wet or the dry he asked also how does an artist find their own style? He makes this comment. I notice students copy the teacher style, teacher's style and their colors. I don't want to be mirroring the teacher's style. <clears throat> That's a question I got I get or have gotten many, many times during all my years of teaching. Alright, so here's the first thing. Now I'm gonna step on some toes here and I'll take responsibility for that. If you don't want to copy the teacher's style, if you don't want the teacher's style to be your style, stay away from teachers that have you to copy their paintings. Simply that simple. Stay away from teachers that um, show you exactly this is the way this is done and then expect you to do exactly what they're doing. Study with teachers that show you the techniques, how to do the techniques and then you eventually when you're learning or you learn the techniques you learn how a brush works as it moves paint how to develop darks into lights how to develop colors how to mix colors all the things that have to do with techniques with brush work with color mixing with composing paintings if you will study with teachers who teach you those things not have you copy their paintings but show you the ropes you can compare it to a, a baseball pitcher. I always like to make this comparison. A baseball pitcher knows how to pitch, learns how to pitch the ball, learns the techniques for causing the ball to do various things he wants it to do. But he eventually will develop his own way of making that work best. Artists, when they learn the basic techniques and practice those techniques, you automatically put it together into your own style and it will evolve in looking like your work and people who are familiar with your work will recognize it as yours when they look at it on the other hand people who copy each other will have uh, paintings displayed you might have say 25 artists who are copying each other or copying their own teacher if they have paintings displayed in one room you won't be able to tell one from another so yes indeed I'm stepping on toes here teachers who teach by having you to copy their paintings stay away from if you're interested in developing your own style if all you're interested in is just doing a painting that's a copy whatever so there's the quick tip so um, if you found these quick tip help quick tips helpful you try our uh, full length videos at dianemise.com go over there and take a look and and you'll, you'll find things there. You're not going to be molded into a particular style. I'm teaching you there mostly ways to compose paintings, put things to get, put paintings together uh, with colors and shapes and values and those kinds of things. And if you have a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here and we'll put yours on the schedule. And there it is. There's your quick tip.